This Model 3 is my first fully electric vehicle, though not my first electrified. Up until this point, I'd had a few plug-in hybrids, which meant that the level one cable I already had on hand was going to reliably recharge my car overnight, at least the daily driving I was doing at that time. But life has a way of keeping us on our toes, and seemingly overnight, not only had my daily commute changed pretty drastically, but so too did the makeup of my driveway, and I would now be hosting a wide variety of vehicles that I would need to be able to charge a lot faster than that level one was ever going to be able to accomplish. So it was time for an upgrade, and I'm here to tell you a little bit about what that upgrade process looked for myself, and what you may need to know if you're considering level two charging at home. Let's start with some of the need to knows about level two charging, but to do that, we need to take one step back and go over at level one, which is plugging your car into a standard wall outlet. That's 120 volts, 12 amps, and it's the same thing you'll plug your TV, a cell phone, or a microwave into. It's not gonna charge your car terribly quickly. For every hour you're plugged in, you'll get about two to four miles of driving range, and that driving range is dependent on the vehicle you drive because the amount of power going in is the same. Moving up to level two charging means you're either hardwired directly into your electrical panel or you are plugging into a significantly larger outlet. And this outlet and that hardwire are gonna be 240 volts, so double the voltage of the level one charger, and they're also gonna be a significant boost in the amperage, usually between 32 and 48 amps. What a lot of folks don't know or consider is that one of the big pieces of how fast your car can charge at home is actually based on the car itself. Not just in how efficient is it with the electricity that goes in, but really how much electricity it will take, because the charging station that we think of when we look at a level two charger is not actually doing any of the charging. Its job is to supply electricity from the panel to the vehicle, which is why it's more accurately described as an EVSE or electrical vehicle supply equipment. Now back over in the car, it actually has a onboard charger and that charger is gonna be rated usually between about seven and 12 kilowatts. My car, for example, has a 7.7 .7 kilowatt onboard charger. And if I was getting six kilowatts from the wall, over to the car, I wouldn't be maximizing the onboard charging potential of my vehicle. But if I had something like 11 and a half kilowatts coming from the wall, I would not be able to charge any faster than that 7.7 .7 because that's going to be the limit. Back over on the wall side of things, it all starts with your electrical panel. And in my case, I had a 60 amp breaker available, but that doesn't mean I'm using a 60 amp EVSC. According to the National Electric Code, I'm not able to use more than 80% of the rating for that breaker for a continuous load. And charging an electric vehicle is definitely gonna qualify as a continuous load. Meaning that for that 60 amp breaker, I have to pair that with a 48 amp EVSE. The other common pairings are gonna be a 50 amp breaker with a 40 amp EVSE and a 40 amp breaker with a 32 amp EVSE. And as I mentioned, that 32 to 48 is really what you're gonna find on most of the equipment available for purchase today. In that equipment, there really come three different categories. There's a mobile, there's a plug-in, and there's a hardwire. And I'll start on the mobile side of things because the mobile is really the truest form of what this is doing because it looks the most like an extension cord which is really what an EVSE is. It's the connection from the electrical panel to the vehicle, and the mobile version is really just a cable that often has a small box towards the plug end of things. That box is really only to tell you if there's a malfunction in the cable. So it'll tell you that it's on standby, there's a fault in the system, or that it's ready and charging. It's all pretty simple and basic. But one of the biggest limitations of that is going to be the maximum charging capacity because this unit is going to be on the less expensive side of all of the available options. It's also designed to be the most mobile. It usually comes with a carrying case. It's designed to sit in the car and go with you a lot easier than any of these other options. So therefore, it's going to be a little bit lighter and those connectors are not going to be as sturdy and those are going to top out usually at 32 amps. What they're going to be plugged into is going to be one of these outlets. And in most cases, they're going to be plugged into a NEMA 1450 that 50 indicating that it's a 50 amp outlet. This is also what you'll plug in the upgraded plug-in units to. And those plug-in units are gonna have more of a box setup like you find in a hardwired unit, but they are still gonna plug into that outlet. But since that outlet is a 50 amp outlet, it doesn't mean you're plugging in a 50 or a 48 amp EVSE. That's gonna be paired with a 40 amp EVSE, which is still going to be a faster capable charger than we get on the 32, but not nearly as much as the 48. One of the biggest benefits of this particular unit is that if you are moving soon or it's a house that you don't spend a whole lot of time in, maybe it is something you go to for a couple months a year, you can go ahead and take that unit off of the wall and bring it with you a lot easier than you can with a hardwired unit, though it is still gonna be a fair tad more difficult or at least 
cumbersome than with a mobile unit that does have its own carrying case that comes with it. One of the other benefits that you'll get when you do this upgrade is that you'll get some of the features that are often associated with a hardwired unit. And by features, I really only mean smart connectivity because again, all of these are doing is moving power. But with a Smart Connect option, there's usually an app available that you can go ahead and check on the charging status of a vehicle, how much power is being pulled, and really just get some data, or maybe be told that it's offline. So whether your internet's gone down or the power has gone out, you could get some sort of notification. The final jump up is to a hardwired unit, and that is hardwired directly into your electrical panel. No plug, which also means that there's not going to be some of the limitations of this outlet. So. On my case, I have a 48 amp EVSE. It is hardwired directly into the 60 amp breaker. And that means I am maximizing, at least in most cases, what people are gonna be able to do for their charging capacity. What I'm not able to do is go ahead and pop that off the wall and take it with me. But since I plan to be here for a while, I don't think that's gonna be much of an issue. It doesn't mean I can't move with it later, but when I do so, there's just gonna be an open cable, which anyone else can go ahead and take their hardware unit and plug directly into. It's just maybe not as simple plug and play or at least conveniently looking than some of those plug units, which you can go ahead and put on the wall, plug in, and you're up and running. Which EVSE is right for you is gonna be really based on two main things. What's your use case and how much do you care about the looks? Because again, all of these are doing the exact same thing, just moving power. If you find yourself in a situation where you wanna have something that's either a little bit easier to carry around or higher charging, that's gonna be pretty obvious which direction you're gonna be heading towards. But if you want something that looks a little bit nicer, it seems like a more permanent installation, then you're either gonna be looking at a hardwired unit or a plug-in option. And again, the variety of those that are available is pretty drastic. You can shop online and there are tons of options. There are also gonna be options at your regular stores like Best Buy these days, which may not have the widest variety, but still pretty easy to access. The other good news is that when you're purchasing a new electric vehicle, a lot of them come with programs to help you get level two chargers installed. This looks a couple different ways, but some of them will actually come with a unit and then there are gonna be a trusted group of installers that you can go ahead and get connected with. On the other end of things, there might be a credit that applies to the purchase of a unit, the installation of one, or sometimes you can forego any level two credit or subsidy and have that put towards level three charging for DC fast charging when you're on the road. For my personal use, I went ahead and chose the Tesla Universal Wall Connector. And there are gonna be a number of reasons that this was gonna be a good fit for me. The first is kind of an obvious one is a Tesla. And so this plug is going to be the one that comes with my vehicle. It's also gonna be what we find in the next few years on a number of other models on their way. Ionic 5 is gonna be the first one. We'll see what else goes ahead and joins that lineup sooner than later. But if it's not a Tesla here in the driveway, like I had earlier, all I have to do is press a single button and I now have the J1772 standard that we find on every other electric vehicle on the market today. That means one unit has both the standard that I need for daily use and the adapter built in, so there's nothing I have to carry around with me. And the biggest inconvenience is if you are switching between models, you have to return to the base to either pick up or drop off this adapter. I don't think that's much of an inconvenience and there's other conveniences that are built into this because this is going to be one of those smart connected units, meaning that it's also really well integrated into my Tesla app. On one screen, I've got my car. On one swipe over, I've got the charging unit. The biggest thing was just getting this installed. And while that wasn't a terribly difficult process, it was something that was not as convenient as it could have been. My apologies if it's a little bit loud, I've got the fan running in the attic, but on the other side of the wall here is where we find my electrical panel. And that's obviously where all of our cabling is coming from. The problem is it now has to get to the front of the garage, which in my case means that we have to go up into the attic. We have to go all the way along the side of the garage here, all the way across the front of the garage, and then a few feet back down and ultimately back out the front. I'm very glad the electrician brought an apprentice and the apprentice drew the short straw on that one. It seemed like it was a pretty tight space and I don't always fit in tight spaces. The whole process took less than an hour and it was just a few days later that an inspector came out, checked the work, gave me the green light, and everything was turned on. In the end, I went out and got five different bids, ranging anywhere from $850 all the way up to $3,500, although that $3,500 was the most by about $2,500. I ended up going with about the $950 option and paid about $1,000 for the install of this unit, not including the cost of the unit itself. Now, the cheapest option I was quoted was not going to pull a permit, and that's something that I really wasn't interested in doing, so I went ahead and paid a little bit more for a company with great ratings, but I will say I did not go through the Tesla network to do so. I purchased this unit separately on my own and went ahead and found a local installer, and overall, pretty happy with the process, but worth noting that $3,500 estimate that I got was also the only person who charged me to come out and give me a quote. Everyone else went ahead and did that for free. 
everyone is gonna have different charging needs. And you may not have to plug in every day, you may not have to switch between multiple cars, and those multiple cars may not have different plugs. But the good news is that there are options already out and there are options on their way to make sure that plugging in and driving your electric vehicle are just that much easier. And if you have any other thoughts, questions, comments, or concerns, please let me know down in the comment section below. I'll be happy to answer as many as I can. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Threads, X, all those other social places. And until next time, I'll see you down the road.